Hey guys, Sandra is here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the fish and pole trap. So it starts with the typical Berlin moose, e4, e5, that goes to f3, that goes to c6, bishop goes to b5, that goes to f6, white is castling. And here, all of a sudden, instead of taking the pawn on e4, uh, which is the main line of Berlin, um, black puts the knight on g4. So the move looks very strange. Um, it feels like uh, the only idea behind it is just to protect the pawn on e5. So now it's not like bishop takes c6 and knight takes e5 is now possible. And white decides just to do this immediately, playing h3. And black plays h5. So this is actually the fish and pole trap. It appears that taking the knight is not so good. Well, for a similar reason, just like in the exchange variation of the real office. So after that, the H file becomes open. And the knight actually cannot go away because there is a queen H4 move immediately creating a threat of a checkmate. And to be completely honest, there are no good squares for this knight at all. Uh, there is no possibility to cover the H file with this knight because G3 is not yet played. So white may try to actually keep the knight on f3 here and play something useful like c3 for example and now it appears black has two interesting possibilities the easiest is just to take on f3 uh, regaining the material and after queen f3 uh, to go queen h4 and after something like queen h3 just to take it winning the pawn and continuing to play the end game with the extra material so black is already better Another way to play that with black after white's incorrect uh, h takes g4 is actually d6 move. So, uh, as you may notice, after g takes f3, queen h4, white uh, were uh, able to protect the king with queen h3 move. So, if black starts with a d6 here, bishop starts playing a role in the attack and white uh, cannot protect his king with the queen h3 anymore. Which means uh, white has only few resources here. So the one possibility is to try g3. Uh, the idea is simple. White wants to put the knight on h4 here. And it appears that black is not against it. So queen goes to f6. Because, you know, knight h4 doesn't really help here. After knight h4, black simply continues with the g5, attacking the knight with another pawn. And uh, it's clear that if knight goes to g2, let's say, uh, it's possible to finish the game with queen h6 rather quickly. So um, it doesn't work, which means the knight should stay there. Um, by the way, uh, after knight g2, another interesting idea, which is possible potentially, is to put the queen on f3 and even exchange queens and then to win the game along the h file. But I don't think it's necessary. So white usually saves the knight here on h4, which means that after d4 or something similar, black may regain the missing material, continuing the attack simultaneously here. So pay attention to that. Uh, if compared to immediate capture on f3, black managed to keep the queens on the board, uh, having still the material advantage and the positional one, a tremendous one because, well, the king is completely uh, abandoned there. There are no defending pieces. So in this position, white may try d5 using the pin, but it doesn't work because black has a counterattack in a6 move. After something like bishop to a4, there is just b5. Uh, the knight is saved and, well, black is just much better. Probably just winning already. So how to deal with this uh, fish and pole trap? Uh, basically, you don't have to take the knight on g4. Let's get back to that position. Instead of taking the knight on g4, white may do something useful. Uh, for example, why not play the c3 move, preparing d4? It's so natural. Uh, and it looks like knight is not really doing anything specific here on g4. Yes, it controls some squares and may be potentially a bit annoying there, but uh, not more than that. In fact, uh, the absence of the knight on f6 gives white additional possibilities here. So after the c3 move, black may try different things. Let's start with the a6. For example, uh, black keeps on playing the normal Rui Lopez, but with a strange knight on g4. In this case, white also continues in the 
uh, normal wage, is bishop a4 going away, and after something like queen f6, this is one of the typical things that black may try here, just bring the queen closer to the king side, uh, white continues with the d4. Uh, simply starting active play in the center, and at some point it will be really ugly for black, because uh, white may prepare a capture on g4, so at some point when the king will be more or less safe, the knight will be really hanging on g4, and this means e5 will be under serious pressure. Let's say queen goes to g6, right, knight goes to d2, simply continuing the development, bishop goes to e7, now rook goes to e1. So white is really close to taking the knight on g4. It may be a threat already now because white has f1 square, which means it's possible to do something like takes, takes, then knight h2, followed by another knight on f1, uh, covering the h file and saving the king. And this means uh, that knight has to go away somewhere, the only normal square is h6, but then e5 drops and so on. So it's not really good for black, as you may notice. Another option is to play active d5. Let's have a look at that as well. So in this position, after c3, black tries a counterattack against e4 pawn. Uh, white may simply take it. After queen captures d5, queen goes to b3. Interesting way to diffuse the pressure. And it appears that knight is pinned now, and e5 is under pressure, and the knight g4 appears the only efficient defender of that pawn. So, I mean, if queen takes queen, then after a takes b3, it's really unclear how to save the material now. So white is definitely gaining some. So black tries to save queens on the board uh, to uh, actually continue with his tricks and, for example, plays queen to d6 move. In this case, rook goes to e1, e-file is open now, so why not attack this e5 pawn? Bishop goes to e6, let's say, queen goes to a4, uh, black is castling, but exactly here, white just takes the knight's damage in the pawn structure. Let's say queen takes c6, queen takes c6, b takes c6, and it's possible to take the knight now. After this, h takes g4 and knight captures on e5. Black still has some play along the h-file, obviously. So, for example, bishop d6 creates a threat of rook to h5 followed by another rook to h8, and this may become really dangerous. Take into account that if king runs away through f1, there may be check on c4. That's why the most uh, convincing move here for white is knight to a3, controlling the square on c4, and now uh, the most dangerous thing is prevented. So after rook h5, d4, rook d to h8, and king to f1, the king safely runs through the center, and white has extra minor piece. As a conclusion, I don't think that this trap is really good for the uh, black player, so I would uh, recommend you not to do that in a serious game. Uh, probably it's a good try in the bleeds or rapid game, especially if your opponent is not aware of what's going on here, uh, but it's highly unlikely that the experienced player will fall into it. I hope you found this video useful. In the next one, we're going to discuss the Mortimer trap. See you there.